Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having an awesome start to your day. Y'all, let's have some fun crafting and make something useful. Stay tuned. And here is today's project, y'all. It is this adorably sweet and stinking cute little three by three note card set. And I absolutely love how this has turned out. And it says crafting is my superpower. So I am going to open this up and show you guys just what we have on the inside. We have some beautiful three by three note cards that didn't need any decorating because the paper is so beautiful. Sometimes we don't need to cover it. And then I made some coordinating little envelopes to go with it. And I am going to show two ways to make an envelope. One using the envelope punch board and one without a punch board. So if you don't have a punch board, you can still make this project and make the envelopes that go with it. So y'all, let's make it. All right guys, so to make our project, here is everything that we're going to need. So we are going to need three pieces of medium weight chipboard cut at three and three quarters by one and seven eighths. Then we need a piece of medium weight chipboard that's cut at seven and a quarter by one and seven eighths. We need a piece that's cut at seven and a half by two. And then we need two pieces that are cut at seven and a half by four. And then to make the three by three note cards, I am using this awesome paper from American Crafts and I will hold it up so that you can see the SKU. And from one sheet, you're able to get eight three by three cards. So that is what I'm using to make the cards. Then I used this sheet of American Crafts to make the envelopes. And then you'll need two sheets to make eight envelopes using a punch board. So if you're going to make your envelopes without a punch board, you are going to need eight pieces of five by seven paper in order to make eight envelopes to go with your kit. And then to make the box itself, I am using this beautiful large polka dot print. And this too is from American Crafts and I'm going to hold that up so that you guys can see the item number. And I have a whole bunch of American Crafts paper. And I don't know if you guys remember, but AC Moore, about a year ago, gifted me a whole bunch of items from the store because I talked about the store on the channel. So they sent me this huge box of almost every craft item they had in the store. And so I'm starting to use a whole bunch of that American Crafts paper that they sent me. Unfortunately, AC Moore has since closed, but you know, the legacy lives on because I have a whole bunch of AC Moore items that I can craft with. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to place down our two seven and a half by four inch pieces of chipboard and our seven and a half by two inch piece of chipboard. So I'm going to flip my paper over because I want the polka dots to be the outside. And I'll trim this off in just a minute, but I am going to place down one of my seven and a half by four inch boards. Then I'll place down my seven and a half by two inch piece and I'm going to place that down giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And I'll take my next board that is seven and a half by four, and I will place that down to the seven and a half by two inch piece, giving myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. Then I'll use my finger blade to trim off my excess paper. And then once I have that trimmed, I am just going to turn this around so then I'll go ahead and just trim off the tagline for American Crafts and we can get rid of that as well. So now that I have my three pieces down, 
I am going to go ahead and go around the ends with my stylus. And all I'm doing, guys, is I'm taking the stylus, using the chipboard as a guide, and just pressing down into my paper so that I can get a nice crease or score in the paper. And this will help to minimize cracking. It won't stop it if your paper has a tendency to crack, but it might minimize it. So now I'm going to stand this up and just go over on all four sides to go ahead and get my paper used to being folded over. Now I'm going to take my finger blade and I'm simply going to miter my ends just like this. And I'll do this on all four sides. And now that I have my ends mitered, I am just going to do a quick check to make sure that on all four sides, I have it nice and closed so that none of the chipboard is showing. If any of your chipboard is showing, take one of the triangles that you cut out and just glue it to that piece so that when you fold over, if there is chipboard showing, it will now show the paper that you are using instead of the chipboard. So I am going to take my glue, and y'all know that I use reptile glue, and I am going to stand this up, fold it over. You can actually use double stick tape, and I also use a tape runner from time to time when I'm putting down my edge pieces because this will be sandwiched between um, a liner piece and the chipboard. Then I'm going to take my spatula and just go along those edges. And so now I'll do the same thing over here. And we'll fold that over, use our spatula to get everything nice and stuck. Then I'll smooth out that end as well. And we're going to do the same thing here. So let's stand it up, fold that over and get it stuck, smooth it out. And we will do our last one. So I'm going to take my fold over piece, fold it down onto the chipboard, get it stuck, clean it up. Then I'll just take my big old spatula, go around my ends, and just sort of rounding as I'm going around. And now we have this beautiful jacket for our project. And I think this is going to be very festive and just so stinking cute. Go for a stop recording. All right, guys, so now it's time to place our liner. And the liner piece measures seven and a quarter by 10 and one eighth. And I have already lined my board here with my tape. And I am going to use my glue to just go along the edges of my liner piece, and then we'll get it stuck to that chipboard base. So I am just placing a thin bead of glue on all four sides of my liner. Then I'll take my liner piece and I am going to place it down on the board, try to get it nice and straight. Luckily, I'm using pattern on pattern, so you won't even notice if there is an imperfection. And then I'll just use my little paper towel here, go over this just to get the glue 
stuck to the paper. And then I'll use my big old spatula. And this time when I come in, I'm really going to work that glue in, especially on my edges because I don't want anything coming undone. So then once I have my glue sort of worked in, I am just going to start defining my spines and I'll flip it over and come at it from this side. And I do it like this because it's just easier for me. Then I'm going to stand it up. And what I'm looking for when I stand it up is to see if I have any puckering or bubbling of my paper in the corners. And on this side, you can see right here where the paper isn't quite stuck. So all I need to do is really come back in with my big old spatula and just start forcing my glue towards where that paper was puckering. And now you can see that paper knows its place. All right, guys, so I have two pieces of 12 by four paper, and we are going to join these together so that we can create the rest of our box, the side and front panels. So I am simply going to take my tape and place it down. Now we are not going to need to use all of this, but we are just going to start big and then cut down as needed. So I am going to lift my tape, take my other piece of 12 by 12 and join them together on the four inch side, just like this. And now what I need to do is I need to place my front pieces. But what I want to try to avoid, I really want to try to avoid having the seam in the front but before I lay anything down, I am just going to do a test fit to see if there's any way possible that I can avoid having that seam show on the front. And actually there is. So basically what I'm doing is I am laying my papers down and the seam is actually over here. So I am just putting a test fit down to see where I need to place that center piece in particular to avoid having that seam show right there on the front. I'm okay with the seam being on the side, but I just don't want it on the front. So now that I know where the seam is, I am going to take this piece and place it down right at the edge of my paper, just like that. Now I can take this piece and place it down next to it, but making sure that I give myself about an eighth of an inch in spacing. And then I'll do the same thing with this piece. So I'm simply getting it stuck down making sure that I give myself about an eighth of an inch. So now I'm going to remove my excess paper. And now I'll take this and just cut and flare out. And I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to cut and flare out. And then I'm going to go along the bottom just in case I didn't get my placement exact and trim away any excess paper. And you can actually see that there was some overhang because I've got this little curly cue of paper right there. So now that we have this, I am going to take my tape and I am going to place tape from end to end, 
covering this and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I have my tape covering this completely and all I'm going to do is take this and just fold it over onto that paper and then I am going to use my handy dandy big old spatula and get all of that paper and tape working together. And now I'll use my finger blade and again I will remove all excess. So then I'm going to take my big old spatula, go across the top, and then I will do just like I did on the box itself, and I am going to define my spine just like this. And you can see when I do this that there is my seam right there, but it's not imposing or ugly or anything at all, so I'm just going to leave it. We are going to have this wonderful U-shape and we're going to take the U-shape and bring our body back in. And all we're going to do is take that U-shape and attach it coming in about an eighth of an inch on both sides. And we will have it stuck just like this. So we are going to go ahead and place our glue and we'll put this down. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're only going to place our glue across the bottom. So I am running a thin bead of glue all the way across the bottom. I'm not saturating it, but I want to make sure that I have enough glue so that I'll have a good stick. So now that I have my glue on my panels here, I am going to take this and hold it just like that. And then I can just very easily maneuver it into place, going in about an eighth of an inch. And then all I'm going to do is look at it to make sure that hopefully I'm square. So when I put it down, I'll just keep checking it to make sure that what I have placed is nice and square. And if it isn't, then I just start moving it around a little bit. When I think I have it the way that I want, just like with the other boxes, we press down just like this and we press, press, press. And that reptile glue is going to catch and hold our box in place. And we're going to let this dry for about 15 minutes and I'll be right back. All right guys, so now that we have a decent enough stick on this, we can start working on closing this box. So all I'm going to do is add glue to my back panels here on both sides. And then I'll simply fold up the back and press. So I am simply going to press that back into place just like that. We'll let this dry for about 15 minutes and then I will be back. Okay guys, so while that is drying, I am going to go ahead and make the little insert piece. And I have a piece that measures three and three quarters by one and seven eighths. And I am simply going to use some of my scrap um, paper. So I'm going to move this out of the way for just a moment and I'll take this piece just like I did that larger panel. I'm going to place it right there at the bottom. I'll use my finger blade to remove all of that. And 
And now I'm very quickly going to put down just a little bit of tape. Fold this over and trim away the excess. So now that I have this piece, I am going to take it and do a test fit. And I want to make sure that I don't have to force it in. If you have to force it in, then you're going to need to remove some of your chipboard. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that both my envelopes and my note cards are going to fit. They are. So now I can take this and place my glue just like that on all edges that are raw. So it's three edges to the chipboard that are not covered on the ends. And that is where I'm placing my glue. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to bring this to me just like this because it'll be easier for me just to take this and slide it down inside. I'll try to get it in the middle. But if I don't, you know what, no worries. So now that I have it in, I am going to wipe away that big glob of glue that I happened to get right there. So now that I have it in position, what I want to do is press like this so that it can stick and press down. So you just want to make sure that you're pressing in and pressing down. And I am going to straighten that up just a little bit. So just like before, let's give this about 10 to 15 minutes to dry and I'll be back. All right guys, so our insert is dry. I went ahead and added some of our three by three note cards and the coordinating envelopes. And I think this is such a cute set. So we're going to decorate the box. Then we're going to make a couple of those cards and the envelopes. So I am going to close this. And as you can see, it doesn't close all of the way without some type of assistance. So I don't really wanna put anything that wraps over or a magnet. So when I don't want to put a true closure on my projects, I place a heavy handle so that it will cause the top to just naturally close on its own. And you can get these gorgeous handles just like this at Hobby Lobby. And I got this one when it was 50% off and it has that aged look to it. So that is what we are going to use to close this. Now you can put it in the middle or you can put it at the front and I think I want it in the middle. So I am just going to take some of my glue, place glue on those pieces, and then I'll take this and I'm just going to put it in the middle. And because it has so much weight, we don't have to put anything else on this to keep it closed. And now we've got this beautifully decorative piece on this box. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about taking your projects to the next level by using the unusual to finish it off, decorate it, embellish it. Don't use what everyone else is using. Stand out and be different. So the last thing that I am going to do on this box is I have these wonderful stickers from Echo Park and it's from the I'd Rather Be Crafting collection. And I am going to use the one that says crafting is my superpower because I think it is. And I am going to add just a little bit of glue because I got these stickers from Tuesday morning and sometimes the Tuesday morning stickers don't have the greatest stick on them. So I am going to take this and put it right here on the front of my box. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to let this and this be enough on this box because I don't think we need anything else. I don't need to add feet or anything to this box because I think it's gorgeous just as it is. So y'all, let's make those cards. 
So to make our cards, we need some six by three decorative paper. Very simple. I'm going to fold it in half, not even place it in my scoreboard. Then I'll use my spatula to get that crease sharp. And I'll do the same thing with this one. I'm not decorating the outside because the card itself is beautiful and what we write on the inside is what counts. And so then I'm going to take my tape runner and I have two squares that measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. I am going to place some tape on the back of each one and place them down inside. That gives us our writing space. Now I'll do the other one. And now we have two more cards to add to our collection. And I currently have eight cards in this box. You could probably very easily get 16 cards and 16 envelopes in a box like this. So now we are going to make one envelope using the punch board, and then I'll show you how to make an envelope without the punch board. So I'm going to bring in my punch board and hopefully you guys can see this, but when you look on the punch board and it shows you that a three by three card requires a piece that measures five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and we will make the first punch at two and three eighths. Don't know if you can see that, but here is where we're going to punch. And here is our measuring guide. So here's my piece that measures five and a quarter by five and a quarter. I am going to put it in at two and three eighths, punch one time and one time only. Then I'll use my stylus, go on the inside and you'll feel this little groove here. You'll feel it on the inside. So you just place your scoring mechanism in that groove and score. Then when we turn it, we are going to turn it so that the score mark lines up with that little pointer right there. And we punch. And then we score again. We rotate, punch, and score until we have completely done it on all four sides. So now you'll have something that looks like this. This particular punch board here has a rounder at the back. So I can put it in and round these ends if I don't want that pointed look. So I'm gonna go ahead and round all four sides. And I didn't get that one in good. And then all we need to do is take our envelope and crease all of our sides. And so you can see how it's wider this way. So you're going to fold in those two pieces and bring up one of these pieces. If you did it the other way, and you can, it's going to overlap like that and you'll never really have that pretty look that you want with your envelope. So with it facing like this, the longer side going like this, fold in those sides, fold up that piece, and that's how we put the envelope together. So I am going to put a drop of glue right there, take that piece and get it stuck. Then all I have to do is I'm going to see how far up this goes so that I'll know where to stop on my glue placement. So I am going to place glue up to about that point because I don't need it to go all the way to the top. Now I can take this and use my spatula to form my envelope. So now we have another envelope that we can add to our box. And that is how you make the envelope if you're using the envelope. Well, let's say you don't have a punch board, but you want to make this envelope anyway for your three by three cards. Using a five by seven piece of cardstock or a text weight paper, whatever you want to use. 
place it in on the five inch side and score at three quarters of an inch. Rotate it to the opposite five inch side and score at three quarters of an inch. Turn it to the seven inch side, score at three and at six and a quarter. And then we need to fold and burnish those scores. Okay, so once you have your scores folded and burnished, we are not going to need these pieces here. So what we're going to do, you can see that I have my score mark here. We're going to angle cut on both sides of those scores. So I am going to angle cut here, angle cut here, and then you can see that I've got my score mark here. When I come to remove this, I'm going to angle because that's just going to give me a prettier finish. So I'm angling in. I'll do the same thing over here. So I angled on both sides of that score mark and I'm going to angle in and you can see how that tapers. Then I'm going to rotate it and we have two corner pieces here that we need to remove all together. But again, we are going to angle. So when we cut here, I'm going to angle just a little bit. And then when I come here, I'm going to angle just a little bit. So you can see that I have that angle there. And I'll do that over here as well. So now we have this and we are going to make an envelope. So we're going to fold this in fold it up and you can see how angling it gives it that cuteness and all we need to do at this point is add glue to this end along the edges. And you have got the perfect little stationary box for your desk because you've got note cards over here, you've got envelopes over here, but if you wanted to, you could actually transfer the note cards and the envelopes to the same side and you could add slips of paper in case you needed to make a note. Totally up to you, however you want to do it, but just enjoy this project when you do make it. So guys, I hope that you have loved this awesome project. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys have a great day. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.